All right, we are back, and the Wilds of Eldrain is here. Uh, the new cards are out on Magic Gathering Arena, and we are here to play some fairies today. Um, this is an archetype that has definitely been large in the past in terms of Magic's history, uh, but when it comes to Arena, I don't think that we really have had fairy tribal. Though that's not to this, that's not to be said that there are no good fairies. Um, we've had Brazen Borrower, an absolute powerhouse from original Eldrain. This has been seeing so much play over t over um, the past few years that it's been around. And we also have Fairy Mastermind, um, one of the tournament winner cards, and a very strong one at that. Uh, but now we have a whole lot of fairies and fairy synergies coming to us from Wilds of Eldraine, and we're going to try to make a cool deck around it. Um, so let's start from the beginning. We have Sleep Cursed Fairy, uh, a one mana flying with Ward 2. And it enters with stun counters on it, so these it basically means that after turn three or so, uh, you'll be able to like have this as a normal three three. So it's just basically like a suspend creature almost, um, except that you can put some mana into it in order to uh, make it be able to attack and block. So that's kind of cool. It can kind of just sit there, and if you hold up two mana, then it can kind of uh, be a deterrent. Ego Drain, a new card from uh, Eldrain as well. It's basically Duress, assuming that you uh, control a fairy. Uh, if you don't, then it will cost you card advantage as well. So you go card neutral, but get something out of your opponent's hand. Still kind of a decent card. Fairy Dream Thief, uh, ETB Surveil 1, otherwise it's a Flying 1-1, one, one, uh, but it has some action from the graveyard as well. Fairy Fencing, uh, basically a removal spell. Uh, you can get a lot more out of it if you have a fairy on the battlefield. Fairy Mastermind draws us cards, basically. Picklock Prankster, this is a, a mill, and then return something from the graveyard uh, for the first two, and then uh, you get a creature on the back half. We're also running Spell Stutter, a new counter spell for Fairy Tribal. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, you basically just, uh, it's basically a spell pierce that gets better with how many fairies you control, so this will definitely be good in the late game. Uh, a classic go for the throat to deal with some large creatures and obira dreaming duelist another fairy thing that uh, will make our opponents lose life it also has flash and flying so it kind of fits in with the fairy archetype and then finally this is not even a new card but from march of the machines we have halo forager uh basically what basically this is a snapcaster mage but just a little bit more expensive and then it happens to be a fairy and we have all the fairy synergy I think the thing that makes us better than the Snapcaster Mage is the fact that it's a 3-1. Uh, it blocks better, and it's a flyer in case you need to go on the offensive. So while Snapcaster Mage is definitely good in uh, you know, control decks due to its lower CMC, I think this one is going to fit just fine in uh, our deck here. And we'll be able to reuse our Go for the Throat, Spell Stutter, uh, and Fairy Fencing, and Ego Drain. So there's quite a lot of hits for it. Um, other than this, we are running 24 lands here, and it is otherwise a pretty standard deck. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, this should be a pretty good start to the new set for us. If you enjoy this content and you want to see more from me, uh, make sure to subscribe if you're new. And if you're a returning subscriber, you can show your support by uh, liking the video or by commenting on it. Uh, those help me out with the YouTube algorithm a lot. Um, also, be on the lookout for my recording queue for the uh, no band list format. Uh, I have quite a lot of things still queued up for that. And I think what I'm going to be doing is I'll just drop them out in the Tuesday and Thursday slots uh, if I don't already have a video lined up. So with that being said, let's hop into some games here and see what kind of damage fairies can do to the historic ladder. Here we go. Okay, here we go. This is our round one here. We got a two lander here that does cast Obira, and then we have some Brazen Borrowers to uh, screw around with. We have Flash out of everything with the exception of Halo Forager. And I think that that will be pretty good since our Fairy Fencing can start to do some damage. I'll keep seven. We'll lead on our Fabled Passage here, and we'll try to resolve an Obira so that we can make use of Fairy Fencing. Our opponent's already mulliganed twice, if I uh, am watching correctly. And that makes me think I have no idea what they're playing. Uh, we are down here in the gold queue here. Uh, it is a new season, or at least I'm playing for the first time this season. 
And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna have some interesting games here. I think I will fetch blue here since we have double blue pips in Brazen Borrower. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of just work on it from here. The Underground River is gonna poke us a little bit, but I'm hoping that we can make do without, um, you know, dying. So this is a Dragon's Rage Channeler deck, a thing that I really didn't expect to be seeing. We have Fairy Fencing to take it out uh, pretty much at any time we want when our opponent taps out. Let's try to get some more intel first and see what we're doing here. Uh, this will not turn on DRC unless they hit exactly three things here. Uh, they're leaving on top anyway, so that's fine. I guess I could have spell stuttered this, seeing as they left on top. That could have been a land that they were looking for. Maybe it's right to uh, just spell stutter here. I don't even know. So we see that my opponent is on three. So they're almost hitting Delirium here. It looks like they kept a one lander, which is surprising. And they did not... They they did not... Why would they not... Why would they discard their tokens on? Do they have something that's that good? I mean, I think we'll just take what we can here in fairy fencing this thing except for the fact that it's just better to go buy right here and eat it all right that feels good uh our opponent might drop land shock here killer obira i hope their plan is just going all in on this uh, drc that's good actually wow so if i were to watery grave here don't really think I can do anything that I want to there with uh, this land. So I'll put it in tap, save myself some life. We get to hold up Spell Stutter and Fairy Fencing. Spell Stutter is basically just counter spell. In this situation, we can also just bounce something back if it's not a huge deal. Faithless Looting we don't care about. They'll do what they want to do. They are setting up Delirium in case that is a thing that matters very much to them. I have to imagine that other than the other three DRCs in their deck, it's probably not going to be super big for them. They sure seem to be dropping a lot of steam vents out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is okay. Or They're dropping a lot of lands out, that is. Um, I will probably just fairy fencing here. Unless they try to kill my Obira. Um, I mean, let's just fairy fencing this thing. We will fairy fencing four. Uh, we can do it for x equals one. And that should do enough. Even if they kill my Obira, um, I'm, as I cast the spell is where it, when it checks for the minus three, minus three. So this will, you know, be a trade. All right. Let's see if they did have that shock. Looks like they didn't. I can Ego Drain. Let's get this uh, used here. We still can hold up Spell Setter for whatever they uh, cast if they cast it. Looks like it is a castable spell. No, okay, so they're just going to uh, let me have that. Makes sense. And now we just get to start swinging in with Obira. We have a Spell Setter for whatever they cast. I think I would counter a Faithless Looting here. They don't even bother to cast it, okay. I mean, if we just get to hit them for a few turns, that is fine by me. If they cast nothing this turn, I will flash in a Brazen Borrower. All right, they've tapped out for that, so we will Spell Stutter this. Do not want to give them good draws here as they clearly are missing land drops. And we can continue to do this again. See if they cast the Faithless Looting again. I'm almost inclined to play a creature if they do this. This is fine. We'll just get a Borrower out and start hurting them. Uh, and yeah, I guess, you know, I, I made the similarities between Halo Forger and um, and uh, Snapcaster Mage, but you know, one thing that is obviously not here is Flash on this card, um, so Spell Stutter can't be used with it. Um, we'll just go ahead and cast this Brazen Borrower. Um, this does 
take a life from them. And we get to hit for five now. Does our opponent have a land here? They don't chalk it in. So that means that we are looking pretty good. Um, we can protect our things with a Brazen Borrower. Or sorry, we can bounce their things with a Brazen Borrower bounce and Spell Stutter another spell. So I'm feeling pretty good about this one. All we got to do is walk all over the finish line. So it looks like our opponent is on... Oh, okay, so it's just our Arc Light Phoenix deck. Sure. Uh, we can just bounce that, I think, if it comes down to it. Uh, the question is, how many do they have in there? Okay, they do have two in there, uh, which is somewhat of a problem. And they check on cast, I believe, right? Yes, so... Looks like they'll probably be able to hit Arclight Phoenixes this turn. One Brazen Borrower will get me pretty close to a kill here. Okay, so they go in with Fiery Impulse. I think I probably just Spell Stutter this one. So I can't pay for that. This will have to be one more Burn Spell. Okay, it's just a Surveil. So they will get one of their birds back. Or, they'll get two of their birds back, rather. Okay. And I imagine they're not going to be attacking this turn. They are dead if they attack, so this makes sense. And do I want to... I want to just put this back in their hand, actually. It's, it's worse there than on the battlefield in any capacity. And we get to put them to three here. And um, fairy fencing, though, is actually a full kill here. So I want to make sure that I do one, two, this. Uh, they, we will go ahead and do this. We'll do it for x equals one. I am not totally sure. Okay, we're gonna have to see how this works. Does this work? <laughs> um, from a graveyard. I actually didn't realize it was a graveyard. So we can just go ahead and do fiery impulse. Um, however, I did want to see if fairy fencing would work like this, and yes, it does. Okay, cool. Um, so, while actually fiery impulse, would that even work in my graveyard? It is spell mastery, two or more instant sorceries. We do have that. So I will just cast my opponent's fiery uh, impulse here, killing their arc light phoenix, and we get to go deal the damage to them and swing for five. Cool, okay, so learning a little bit here about some of the lines, um, pretty interesting that we do actually get to choose the graveyard for Halo Forager. If you've played a lot with this card, that might just come, you know, naturally to you, but uh, that's not, not something that is really intuitive, I would say. That being said, very well, we were able to take round one, and that means let's hop into round two. Here we go. All right, here we go. We are in round two. We get a Sleep Cursed Fairy here, which is uh, definitely a card I'm trying to play. It's ultimately a pretty low CMC start, but I think I want to keep it. This will be... It's good because we're on the play. The Spell Stutter will not be held up for, like... It's going to be kind of inconvenient. Um, but we might be able to work around it. All right, our opponent keeps seven. I have no idea what they're playing. They have the default sleeves and a Jaya emblem. Who knows what's gonna be coming from here. We'll start this out with a Sleep Cursed Fairy in case they are on some sort of counterspell build. Um, the fact that this thing has Ward 2 is pretty solid. Um, and we will just go ahead and catch blue, I guess. And we get to have a Fairy Dream Thief as well. Opponent on red green. We can get another sleep cursed fairy here, which is actually kind of solid. We could just commit to the board, honestly. I'm feeling like that's a good idea. The Biomancer's familiar deck. I don't know what is happening over there. We'll find black here. And yeah, I think we're just gonna go really wide. Um, Obira 
she's okay. I wish I had had her before I played all these fairies. So maybe I'll just put her in the graveyard. I think we can draw something better. So we got little pinging fairy dream thieves coming out. Our opponent, what is she doing? Rishkar, put a 1-1 one -one counter on two creatures. Spymancer's familiar. Does not do anything interesting yet. Okay, no problem. We'll take our food. Um, our Sleep Cursed Fairy is about to untap next turn. We have a Pick Lock Prankster that can give us some card advantage. What do we want out of here? We take our Robyra, we can take a Fairy Mastermind. Our opponent doesn't really seem to be interested in drawing cards, so maybe it's just Obira. Uh, I will play her first so that the Picklock Prankster can do something interesting next turn. And I should have kept up Spell Stutter, but YOLO. Alright. So what happens now for my opponent? I think that they could definitely be on some sort of combo here. Kinnon, that makes sense. So this is going to be a bunch of mana. And I think that eventually Biomancer's Familiar makes infinite mana. Um, Agatha. So we're just discounting activated abilities. Now Fiend Artisan can get something for almost free. Uh, I think now is probably a great time to just kill Fiend Artisan. Um, and now we have some attacks that can be made. So we will just go in with all these creatures and hope that we can race our opponent down to zero. Uh, of course, we can untap the Sleep Cursed Fairies, and this Picklock Prankster can come in. I think I'd rather just hold up Spellstar TBH. We might be able to get them with a Sleep Cursed Fairy block, too. Alright, what does Agatha do? Oh, that is something that she can do. Okay. So, we can make... How much mana here? It's just a Kinnon activation. Okay. Probably should have killed Kinnon. Uh, Fiend Artisan is good, but Kinnon is better. Although I suppose the Fiend Artisan could have found another Kinnon, so it's neither here nor there. It looks like our opponent didn't have a thing that could contend with our blockers. So we'll take that one. All right, we cleaned up round two, and uh, that means let's hop into round three. Here we go. Things are looking good so far. All right, round three, let's go. We have a bit of a decent start here, so let's give it a try. Cauldron Familiar, now that is something I haven't seen in a while. Do I Ego Drain? Let's get a fairy on the battlefield first. Maybe turn three, Ego Drain. Well, that just kind of changed things, potentially. I'll keep a Spell Stutter. Not a block. Priest of Forgotten Gods, okay. Let's see what we're doing here. This is kind of just like a standard Aristocrats deck. We'll swing in. We can spell set or something if they're trying to set up a priest thing. Otherwise, you can flash in a fairy mastermind if uh, need be. Bowmasters, no. Sorry, so priest doesn't do anything now, or at least for a little bit. I kind of get what they're going for with this deck, though. Trying to bully me with Bowmasters. It's good to know that they have that, because Fairy Mastermind does not match up well against that card. Uh, I can kill Priest of Forgotten Gods kind of at will here. I'll swing in. If my opponent decides to draw some cards, be Fairy Mastermind and or fairy uh, fend fencing. All can go at instant speed. Sure. 
So we're gonna activate priest, I guess. I'm fine to lose my fairy dream thief. That's not like my best card by any means. So it looks like they're gonna try to draw on my my turn. I wanna get this fairy master in, and if they activate priest on their turn now. Okay, so now they can't activate on their turn without giving me another card. So what if I were to fairy fencing x equals zero, their priest. That puts them in a tough spot. They'll need to activate and give me a card as well. So we'll go card neutral. All right, they just let me have the kill, cool. Um, I'm fine to just go in here. Now Ego Drain is pretty good. Let's pick apart their hand. Collected company, okay. X is the number of creatures plus the number of foods. So that's the only thing they can reliably cast here. I don't mind if they kill my Fairy Mastermind, to be honest. I'd rather get rid of Woe Strider. Make it harder for them to play stuff. We could potentially find something good here off of Picklock Prankster. Might as well use the mana. Alright, what would we find? Dream Thief? Okay, take it. It's another creature. This will help insulate us against Priest. And I think Ego Drain is good because I can get rid of a collected company. Gilded Goose, they can activate their Priest now. Okay. They cannot cast Collected Company yet. We do get to redraw. They don't have the colors for Collected Company though. Ho ho! So all they can do is take Jugantha. Yep. Messed up. Let's get another blue source here. We're down to one in deck, or one uh, land in deck. I can take their Gigantha here. I could also just take a collected company. What do we take? Gigantha, I probably just take collected company. One, is, one of those is gonna suck, but it's okay. Uh, let's free the Fey. Look for something good here. We actually want to hit a counter spell. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ego Drain does take the other uh, collected company. Alright, we're picking apart this hand real nice. Opponent does not have the white mana to cast that Hobbit Sting, notably. Even if this is a land, okay, that means they still can't do anything. Alright, and that's enough for them to pack it in. Okay, well, uh, unlike these other games, we definitely found real good utility this time with Ego Drain and Fairy Fencing. Once you get a Fairy on board, these cards are actually pretty strong. So, maybe there's something to go for here. I mean, I'm kind of just trying this out to see what the archetype is like. But maybe there is something to uh, run with here. If you're a fairies uh, enthusiast, definitely let me know what you are uh, playtesting with. I am really interested to see where this archetype could go. With that being said, that's our round three. We have round four coming up. Stick around. Here we go. All right, let's go. So we are in round four. Um, Sleep Cursed Fairy. I have been on record saying I like this card. We'll keep it. Opponent goes down by one card. Let's see if they go down by two. They do. What could they be searching for? Who knows? Here's to hoping that Sleep Curse Fairy can stick around and survive. Oh boy. I don't know what this is going to be, but having a spell stutter makes me feel a lot better about it. So either this is elves or they're ramping into something big. Let's see what it is. The Seiju comes down, and this is just going to be big stuff dot deck. Okay, got it. So this go for the throat is actually a great draw. We'll pass here.
I might need to kill old growth troll. Ah, that Nyx, Nyx those sucks. Um, we will spell setter this. And then I'm gonna kill old growth troll to turn off their Nyx those. All right, so now they're in top deck mode. This is actually not terrible. We've gotten through the worst of what they can do, and Fairy Fencing is a great card to pick up here. We'll pay two life for this. Go for the throw on Growth Troll. Um, sure, that's fine. Um, and then we'll Fairy Fencing their remaining elf. Well, we can... Actually, yeah, we should just probably do this now. This hurts Nykthos, and it prevents them from having mana. Okay, cool. So they get a bit out of that forest and Old Growth Troll, so that's fine. Actually, yeah, this comes back as a three devotion anyway, so that's kind of brutal. All right, well, they can't do anything with their mana, so that's good. We can now remove whatever it is they're going to try to throw at us next. And we'll have a Sleep Cursed Fairy in case they attack. So we're definitely flashing in Fairy Mastermind. They have access to six mana. Fulfilla Haven, that's fine. Uh, they can always sacrifice this to draw, I believe, right? Yeah, it's one in sack to draw. I mean, should I just kill this? I will activate. <laughs> we can untap. Gotcha. We will block. Alright, two mana to kill the land of War Elves. That actually was pretty impactful. And I think it was worth two mana. Alright, now we can go ahead and find a black mana. Uh, let's go ahead and swing in, and then I'll cast Fairy Mastermind, and maybe I'll just go looking with the Picklock Prankster. I suppose we'll take another one of these. Based on the way that my mana is looking like, I think that's a good move. Assuming we don't draw land, I just want more two drops. If we do draw land, then I'd be sad that I didn't take that one drop, but it is what it is. I think it's pretty likely that I could expect to not draw land. And as for my opponent, they have still their six, seven mana. As long as they draw into something, they can still pop off. So I'm really not in the clear yet. The question is, will they stick around to do so? They've already sat for quite a while, so maybe they are just roping me out. If that's the case, we will. Uh, I'll just edit this one, and I will see you guys when this round is over. All right, they're finally gone. Uh, well, that's kind of just what happens here in the lower rank sometimes. Uh, we will just take that one in stride. Okay, so round four is done. Let's hop into round five. Here we go. All right, we're in the final round here. Let's see if we can make something of it. We have a spell setter. We have a one drop. I'll keep it. We're also on the draw. That's kind of the biggest part of this. Uh, Sleep Bear's Fairy is kind of nice. It'd be good if I could draw a card, though. Hmm, I already do have a turn two play, so I'll, I'll keep that card, I guess. If I eventually draw that third land, then I'll be happy to just play additionally a Sleep Curse Fairy. Get to hold up our mana here and pass. Tabled Passage, unoptimal. Here's a Byra. Do we get it? They might have Fatal Push. No, it looks like they don't. Okay. Uh, well, we get to swing in here. We'll hold up Spell Setter and a bounce on the Brazen Borrower. I'll end turn. Opponent's got to deal with three damage a turn. There's their blue land. It is a Demir Mirror. Nope, psych. No, it's not. This is Soul Tie. Okay. Uh, well, we can't. We could spell stutter this, but we're not gonna. Let's look to see if they play an actual spell here. An actual impactful spell. And they don't. Okay. 
Well, we will just swing in here and hold up the spell stutter to keep our board intact. Opponent's got something. I'd be fine with an unsummon. We got a 13. They're just continuing to take it. We're fine with this. Do they flash something in? They just go impulse. Okay. I mean, they're going to be looking for something. We have inevitability on our side. What we don't have is a third land drop, though. And I'd like to see that before they can turn the corner. That's another Fable Passage, so that's starting to get scary. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Did not realize that that was just holding on priority. Whoops. Okay. So they will get a fourth color. Oh. What are we dealing with? There's nothing like being down in gold to uh, put you in the way of some cool new brews, potentially. Oh, is this just Tybalt's trickery? No, it's not. What the heck am I looking at? Uh, we go to our turn. I could just send this back to their hand, annoyingly. Um, though they might just have to block Obira, so that's like, okay. Um, let's free the Fey, I guess. It's gonna be sad to see a land get milled right now. I knew it. <laughs> Uh, we can take Ego Drain, see what they're working with. I like the idea of that, especially if I can actually draw that land. Oh, never didn't have it. Never didn't have it. Okay, so Ego Drain at my opponent. Let's see what their hand is. Looks like they have something at instant speed. Oh. Oh, is this um, Teamer Song of Creation? That might be what this is. They'll ramp me doing this. I think I need to spell stutter this. I think if I do this, I take their, um, their Song of Creation and then they're just stuck. Any dispute? Okay. They really don't want that to resolve. Yep, okay, it is Song of Creation. So we kill that. And now our opponent has to find the answer while being hit in the face until they're dead. Uh, if they go ahead and do this Paradox Engine thing, that really doesn't do anything for them either. They have to simply Impulse here, I think. All right, well, we know what our opponent wanted to do, and we stopped that. So it's as simple as trying to just make our way to the end gate. We can bra brazen borrower this thing twice. And that's actually a really good thing, because this will not only, as they recast it, uh, allow me to draw into true removal, but I'll be able to pretty much put them down to one. And every time they play this oracle, they will just be thinning out their library. Now, or they'll be making their library even more thin. And this will be okay unless they draw time walk. Well, let's see if we can get lucky. Sleepers fairy. Let's get in for three. Oh, a little bit more than three actually. So it looks like they'll just have to play Oracle again, depending on what they drew. There goes Oracle again. I'm praying this makes their library extremely hard to find answers in. Uh, I could Halo Forger, what does this do for me? This could actually find Oh no, I don't have a removal spell. Then that means that it's probably just gonna be Brazen Borrower on the Alpha. And I can exile this to a draw card, I guess. We can even get a Brazen Borrower out, actually. 
They'll sack their, uh, they'll sack their, um, oracle. That's fine. This will fizzle. And I think I'll just attack in. Put them to three. It will be two when I cast this Brazen Borrower in response to whatever removal they could possibly find. And I think we're looking like we have it here. Let's see what our opponent can do. Let's opt on my end step. And if they don't find anything, it's looking like that is GG. Let's try to bottom and let's see what they find. Ancestral Recall, that is a very good start for them. Um, yeah, can't do much about that. This is how a one turn kill starts. So let's see what happens. This is Song of Creation. I do not have a response for that. They might have me. There's a Black Lotus and yeah, I think they might just have me dead here. Um, what I will do here is just Brazen Borrower out, put my hand on the table and See what my opponent can do. Uh, they don't need to pay any life to execute their combo, so it is pretty likely they can just get me here. There's the time walk that they needed, so they are insulated against uh, a turn where they brick, but they do just need to kill me here. Uh, they will need to find tendrils out of the sideboard or equivalent in their deck. I think they have me. I'll go ahead and just let them execute this combo uh, because I know that it can take a long time. And I'll just edit this one for you guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think we had a pretty solid time with fairies here. Uh, we got things done and, you know, we also got comboed out. But uh, so is the nature of uh, Arena here. Pretty chaotic down here in gold. Um, we're getting wild, wild games. But uh, it is a good opportunity to test a lot of interesting decks. So get, get excited for a lot of new stuff coming from you over the next couple of weeks as uh, we dive into the Eldrain new cards. And uh, once again, I'll reiterate, if you are a new viewer of my channel and you would like to see more of my videos, do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It is free and easy and you will get videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, you can also support me by liking the video and commenting on it because that helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. That being said, I have rambled on for long enough and my opponent has still not killed me, but I can smell that it's coming, so I will go ahead and uh, finish the edit, and I will see you in the next video.